Hey everyone, welcome back to JNI Vlog. This is the transformer tutorial part three. So previously we talked about installing the Wing Transformer package. We talked about using the sample code to train your own transform model completely from scratch. But notice that here the sample data is randomly generated and we don't like that. We want the sample data to come from real question answer pair. So last session we talked about the sample question answer pair that is in the format of a Panda data frame. And if you plot it, it will look like this. There's a question column, there's an answer column. And the context of each question answer pair makes sense. For example, you can say, what is the capital of France? And the answer is capital of France is Paris. So we talked about all that. And then we talked about how to use a tokenizer to convert this into numbers and then to train a transformer model. But of course, it's difficult to do it, right? Because here we have only four samples and then we have a couple of words. We're talking about a very small universe here that just does not have a whole lot of knowledge. What do we do, right? Today, we're gonna dive into how to train a transform model to have it learn the context in here. So first thing that I fine tune is the maximum length. I look at the output of these tokenized vectors and notice that there are a bunch of zeros behind. I don't like that. That will raise the sparsity problem. So one thing that I did is to reduce the maximum length. Uh, but of course, it depends on the data set. If your data set has 10 words, 20 words, 30 words in one sample, you probably want to play around with this, increasing it, so on and so forth. In this case, each sentence does not have a whole lot of words. Like for example, what is the capital of France? We're talking about a sentence with six words. So that is why I set the maximum length to be seven, and that's one hyperparameter. The next thing I change is the input vocabulary. The input vocabulary also affects how many features that this model is designed to learn. Of course, the larger the size is, the more things you're gonna have to learn, the more patterns it's gonna have to recognize. And for data set with only four samples, of course, you can think that's pretty challenging. Now, I actually don't know if this 400 is optimal. I don't know if we can reduce that even less to make it work, but here's where that concept coming from. If you look into my website with a paper published in 2021 under the title, An Interaction-Based Recurrent Neural Network, in section 2.3, I have this sentence here that says, in some situations, there can be variables with many unique values that can be considered continuous to avoid the sparsity problem, right? And the sparsity problem here means that we have too many unique levels with the lack of training sample size in the data. So that is essentially what's the concept coming from. Now, of course, I don't really know what's the best way to do this across any domains. I don't think that's possible. But one strategy here is to think about the big data problem as simple as the sample size versus the number of unique level that you are trying to learn. So if you think about this as a practice exam, sample size can simply be the number of hours that you're putting, the number of practice exams that you go through. The number of unique levels in the feature sets can refer to the different types of problems that you are trying to study. And of course, the more levels means that the more types of problems you have to learn to be able to ace this test. And that's of course more difficult. So the idea here is given that your data set has a fixed training sample size, how do you reduce the amount of unique levels? So with that being said, that's pretty much what I'm trying to do here. I fix the parameters of the model to be as little as I possibly can, right? I'm only have two numbers here for the number of heads for the multi-head attention. I'm only have two layers here for the encoders. So I'm not trying to build a deep model because the deeper the model I'm trying to build, the difficult it is to learn because the data set I'm having here only has four samples. So with those things in mind, that allows me to come up with a training strategy, which is to reduce this vocabulary size and then to increase the number of epoch iterations. So that's what I did. And then it took me about 10, 15 minutes to get to the final model. And now I'm able to give a question, who wrote Hamlet? And then the answer says, Shakespeare wrote Hamlet. 
So at least in this particular test, it's somewhat human sensible. And if you run a Turing test on this, obviously the Turing test will pass, right? Because if I ask a question, who wrote Hamlet? And then if you give me an answer, Shakespeare wrote Hamlet, and that's correct answer, then I will have no way of telling if this answer come from a robot or come from a human or come from an expert. Since I'm not able to tell the answer apart, it is said that the Turing test is passed in this particular instance. So with that being said, that is how I think about how to fine tune a transformer model. Now, of course, I'm not claiming that this is the only way. I'm not claiming that this is the best way. Um, I'm sharing with you guys this to simply let you know that this is the thought process of how I use it. Hope you like it. Hopefully this sheds some light of how to fine tune transformer model. How do you think about sparsity problem? Thank you for watching, subscribe and like.